tell, tell me what what Baltimore meant to Milt Pappas because you know there, there's a bitter irony with the fact that Milt as we build this show tonight the a night for 32 remembering Milt Pappas the Orioles first best pitcher he was both loved as a performer loved as a pitcher here but in a weird way, the fact he was traded for Frank Robinson, who made the Orioles great, has placed in, placed Milt in a bitter irony situation, didn't it? Well, it did, because um, I think there was some talk of trade at, around that time, and Milt was told that he was not going to be traded, and then bingo, he is traded. And... I'll never forget that. My husband and I were on our way over to their house, and you know that was before cell phones, and which was great. And we heard it on the radio that he was traded, and oh my God, we could not believe it. So we went right over there, and I have to tell you, you could barely get in there. There were so many reporters and so many people, and all the TV and radio stations were calling and. He grabbed a hold of my husband and he said, come on, Elliot, let's go. And they went from TV station to TV station. And I don't think really Milt had a chance to process the whole deal at that time. But, um, you know, he did what it was that he had to do. And he was traded and he was traded. And that was, you know, that was part of it. But how special did Baltimore remain to Milt Pappas? Milt always, always loved Baltimore, and his, uh, he lived in Chicago, and he really, at some point, wanted to come back here to live and find something to do here. And so, unfortunately, he didn't have that option at the end, but that's really what he wanted to do. So, you know, it was what it was, and what was he like before the trade and what was he like after the trade did it change the person at all no i don't think it really changed the person i think that um i guess being a ball player that that's one of the things that you have to understand can happen but i think that it was a big shock to him because uh he was told that no you're not going to be traded and then 24 hours later, he was traded. But, um, you know, he went to Cincinnati and he did what he had to do and he missed Baltimore. And um, that was his job, I guess. All right. Mill Pappas was, as I say, signed by the Orioles in 1957, June 26, 1957. He pitched three games at Knoxville in the Sally League, he had a 4.91 earned run average. In 11 innings pitched, he gave up six earned runs, 10 walks, and it shows that he didn't record a strikeout. Then he was brought up by the Orioles before that first year, all the way from the Sally League, where he pitched four games for the Orioles, nine innings pitched, one earned run, three walks, and three strikeouts. By 1958, when he was only, by my count, I think 18 years old, or 19 years old. I was four. Okay. <laughs> well, he pitched 31 games, he had 21 starts, and he had a 10-10 and 10 record and a 4.06 earned run average, under 20 years of age. That's absolutely astounding to me. And I didn't realize he was that good, that young, as much as I studied Mel Pappas. Yeah, he was he was a fabulous pitcher, and he um, he loved what he did, and that was his whole life. And he just was I can't say enough about him. You know, he was my second best friend in the world. My husband was my first, and Milt was my second best friend. And um, I know he's up there listening to everything I'm saying, so I'm being very careful what I say. <laughs> Tell me, tell me about one thing. Why was it, because folks are just now getting their food and we're gonna let them yeah. sit, relax, and eat, eat their meals. Tell us why this night is important to you to put a little bit of closure on this for you. Well, Kevin, I'm gonna have to 
Carol and Milk and Elliot and I had been friends for so long, and as I had said earlier, that we had good times and we went through good times and bad times together, but we were always together. And I guess I just still can't picture the fact that he is gone. I look over here and I see Steve and, and the rest of the guys, and I'm looking and I'm saying, where's Mel? But he really was a terrific person, and I called Stan and I said, hey Stan, let's, and Justin, and I said, let's do something. We took a little tonight. meeting, we took a little meeting. We did, we had a little meeting. And I said, why don't we do something to honor Mel? And I can tell you that I thank each and every one of you for being here, and this would mean so much to him. One last question before we let people chow down yep. and relax. Talk a little bit about how many years ago was it now that the Pappas family celebrated their 40th anniversary here? And how did that come about? Because for years people were asking Milt and they were asking Harriet, is Milt, does he own that restaurant? How did it come about that, that Milt Pappas came to be identified with Pappas Restaurant? Well, I have to tell you that um, I'm a big fan of Pappas Restaurant, as the Pappas family knows. <laughs> And um, I had told Mel when he was coming in to visit, and he would come often to visit, and I would say, oh my gosh, you just have to go to Pappas's restaurant, it's fabulous. And then Justin had asked me, I actually was a corporate event planner, and he had asked me to do the 40th anniversary, and I said, you know, that's great, why don't we get Mel Pappas to come in? <laughs> and, you know. Sneezed on the truth. Yeah, absolutely, God bless you. And so anyway, Milk came in, and I will never forget the interview that you did at my house with Milk. Now, Milk had never been to Pappas's restaurant. He, Stan interviewed him, and you would have thought he was the biggest fan of Pappas's restaurant. <laughs> he had never been there. Remember that? Yes, I do. And we just left. I kept saying, maybe he'd been here, and I didn't know it. But anyway, so he came to the 40th anniversary and he fell in love with the Pappas family and they have been friends ever since and in fact Milt had autographed a picture that is in the Cranbrook uh, store or restaurant that says thank you for making me famous <laughs> so but I don't leave without saying thank you to the Pappas family for tonight. Justin and Harriet and Mark and Tina and everybody, they're just terrific. And I can't thank you enough. All right, listen, for coming out tonight, we asked each of you to take one of these tickets. And we've got a few autographed baseballs here. And I'm going to pick out the baseball. And the first one we got is signed by a guy named Brooks Robinson. Harriet, will you pick out a number? Oh and read God. that Somebody's number. Somebody's going to hate me if I don't pick that one. All right. Here. All right. You want me to read the number out? All right. Look at your tickets. We're going to do this throughout the evening. 591-531. 591-531. 591-531. Is oh, Brooks I Robinson see somebody baseball. back there. Does somebody have it? Yeah. Come on forward and present it. We'll do this a couple times throughout the evening. Relax, enjoy your meal. Let's hear it for Harriet Goldberg. I'm Stan the Fan from Press Box, and we'll be back in a little bit with Brooks Robinson, Boop Pal, Ron Hansen, Bill Stetka, and Jim Henneman. Enjoy your dinner.